In order to understand why we're increasingly talking about adaptation, we need to understand and bear in mind that climatic changes are the result of unprecedented stress exerted by man on the planet because of demographic data, but also because uh, natural resources have been exploited in order to allow the population to survive. In 1988, the Intergovernmental Panel of Experts on Climate Changes was created. It was a UN scientific body, and at the time, they showed that in order to fight climatic changes, there were two options, mitigation, i.e. attenuation, reduction of the problem by reducing greenhouse effect gas emissions, and adaptation, which addresses the consequences. For about 10 years, Adaptation was missing from the discussions. There were international negotiations, political agenda, scientific program programming. Due to several reasons, first of all, people were optimistic and they thought they would solve the problem based on two scientific studies of the time. One based on the uh, rules and regulations, for instance, the protocol, the Montreal Protocol in 1987 dealing with CFC gases responsible for the destruction of the ozone layer. The second tool was a financial tool, 1995, the creation of the cap and trade market for uh, sulfur dioxide emissions and uh, stabilizing, uh, establishing quotas and the United States the idea was to decrease acid rain. At the end of the 90s, the impact of the climatic changes were still vague and very far away for some people. And people denied the fact that the human being and his life side could have such a big impact on the whole planet and the climate system. But years went by and uh, climatic changes became tangible in island countries and developing countries especially. Sea levels started rising, there were longer drought periods, My vegetation plant migration, new diseases, and the countries acquired more influence in the international negotiation, and rich countries' awareness to the unfairness of the situation grew, and finally, the concept of adaptation became obvious especially for urban ecosystems, bearing in mind that ever since 2008, more than 50% of the population lives in urban areas, and therefore urban populations are more vulnerable because there is a dense population and also because of the economic activity and the infrastructures. Now, adaptation is part of the policies on all levels, national, regional, territorial, metropolitan. In France, ever since the Grenelle de law in July of 2010, each town with more than 50,000 inhabitants must come up with a climate energy territorial plan where the concept of adaptation must be addressed. But setting up and implementing adaptation measures is uh, left for the uh, townships to uh, decide. Operationally speaking, what are we talking about? On the field, adaptation is interpreted as the implementation of actions in order to protect the communities, the population, the activities against a speeding up of extreme climatic events, especially regarding their intensity, durations, and frequency. Originally, the idea was to anticipate future impacts relying on climatic models. However, climatic scenarios uh, carry uncertainties which slowed down the efforts and all political efforts ground to a halt and people realized they had to take in consideration also uh, various kinds of dynamics, social, etc., in order to understand the vulnerability of populations and territories. There are several adaptation scenarios, the anticipative scenario, the reactive scenario, short, medium, long term, depending on the time scale, the space 
scale and based on the action we can talk about re-planning the uh, coastal areas, re-planning the infrastructure and making them more resilient, creating of uh, cool islands, uh, greening of towns, etc. However, if we take the terminology definition of what adaptation or adjustment means, the notion can be interpreted by referring to the fact that it is a state which evolves constantly and therefore it is not just an adjustment but a response to a number of changes and the adaptation process is now emerging in the discussions through the transformational adaptation concept. In this definition, according to the last IPCC report in 2014, we're no longer talking about orienting our action on the reduction of vulnerability and increasing resilience in a given territory, but by questioning the very fundamental data of all our institutional and social systems that are currently being operated. Adaptation is not about adjusting practices that are responsible for climate changes, but rather changing the very basis of the system by embarking on a number of different pathways in the society realm. We have to bear in mind that climate changes are part and parcel of an evolution that will happen on the global level. Global changes is the term we used to refer to them brought about by uh, growth processes such as demographic growth and energetic growth of our civilization. We also need to understand that climate changes are silent transformations, as François Julien used to say, intangible, permanent. For instance, it is difficult to see the climate evolution or the climate change the same way that we don't see plants migrating northwards, glaciers uh, melting, or the sea eating up the shores, because we have this sign of transformation under our eyes. And therefore, adaptation is only a response to a change that is uh, changing the shape of our landscape behavioral changes, uh, gr growing awareness towards these changes, the changes made in the education and a growing awareness both on the individual and collective level are many examples of silent adaptation. So adaptation is something that we are discovering in a new dimension, a dynamic and systemic dimension. The current context which tells us that uh, our fossil fuels and carbon resources, carbonated resources are finite, makes it necessary for us to adapt our entropic activity on the natural dynamic of resources and not the other way around.